Sunday morning, the skies over Damascus lit up in what the Syrian officials are describing as the second Israeli airstrike in three days. Has Israel declared war on Syria? Well, this morning we're joined on the line with Viktor Nadine Rayevsky. He is a Russian politologist, also a senior research assistant at the Institute of the World Economy and International Relations. And he joins us this morning from Moscow. Viktor, good day. Good day. What has been the official word coming from both Israel and Syria regarding these latest series of airstrikes near Damascus? Oh, these airstrikes, well, it's normal and usual Israeli politics. Uh, well, uh, Israeli first uh, said nothing about these blows, and now they are writing that only two people were killed there. Damascus has other um, other figures. Well, but what is uh, mainly uh, what is important uh, in the nowadays situation? In fact, this is. Uh, uh, as I understand, a distant, um, a distant step towards the intervention against Syria, and uh, Israeli shows to be a part of this intervention, because before uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, different speculations about the Turkish participants and so on, but it came so that Turks uh, are becoming more and more. Uh, accurate in this. Uh, maybe they're afraid of the consequences of their own country. As for Israeli, after calculation of what is uh, good or bad for the Israeli politics and uh, for Israeli uh, situation in the region, they, as I understand, decided that that's quite the way to weaken the regime. Uh, in fact, that will give it, give opportunity for Israeli uh, to gain, uh, to gain, uh, uh, to gain in the territory, um, uh, in the territory uh, problem with Syria, uh, as we know the uh, Holland sites, uh, well the Holland Hills, uh, how they are better to call them. Uh, well, uh, they are occupied by Israel, and of course Israel is not going to give back these territories. Well, and now, well, Victor. Victor, the opportunity for Israel without any treaty, uh, well, just uh, once and forever to solve this problem. Okay, well, that Victor, one, not one... To the only, not, not the only purpose. The United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki Moon has expressed uh, what he described as grave concern over the reports of the Israeli airstrikes. However, uh, this is a, si a significant escalation in this already very dire situation uh, with now a, a foreign uh uh, sovereign state now taking official military action against the regime of Bashar al-Assad. Uh, what is likely to come next after uh, these these uh, now series of two airstrikes over the past three days? Well, uh, I'm afraid that for uh, Bashar al-Assad, of course, this is a blow and a very dangerous one. But in fact, the Syrian situation uh, Bashar Assad and his army is in such a position uh, that gives them no opportunity uh, to give, um, well, a good blow, uh, well, uh, a good blow against them to stop this uh, aggressive acts or to have another military actions um, as an answer to this Israeli attack. Uh, this station uh, shows that uh, Bashar Assad understands that he has nothing to do with this. And uh, his, um, uh, his um, anti-rocket systems uh, show that they're weak enough uh, and does not give opportunity to stop any, uh, any aviation blows against Syria. Maybe this is, again, a step from the side of Israel just to check up uh, how serious is the situation inside the Syrian army, and uh, that's how uh, to understand. Is it possible to have attacks without any answer? Uh, that is very important for Israeli. And that shows that uh, uh, the answer from Syria, uh, well, may not follow at all. Uh, and that will give opportunity for the Israeli to act uh, with open, uh, open uh, hands. Can call it. 
uh, that is important, of course. And besides, of course, uh, uh, Israel, in fact, uh, interested uh, for some period in, for some period of their politics, they were interested, of course, just to back up the regime. Uh, because uh, no one can guess who will be the next coming to power in Syria, and predominantly that uh, will be some uh, some organizations that are uh, well, working together with Al Qaeda, and that may be not the best variant for Israeli. But now they understand that the situation inside the opposition movement uh, is uh, well not so good for those who are fighting uh, on the side of Al-Qaeda, on the side of uh, uh, the uh, uh, the front, um, well, uh, well, the front of uh, opposition forces. And that gives opportunity for some maneuver. And Israel just uh, will try to use this opportunity to strengthen the positions of the surrounding uh, regions uh, maybe just to uh, well to divide Syria into several uh, quite tiny states. If you could somehow explain well, the connections that are being made uh, by Israel, and again these these uh, a- accusations are coming from the Israelis and, and the Israelis alone, but the connections between Hezbollah and the Syrian regime and the role that Iran is playing in all of this, could you help us to understand that, please? Well, of course, uh, for Israeli, uh, the connection between Hezbollah and uh, Iranians and Syrians, of course, Syrian regime is ma- is the main sponsor, the main route for the help that comes to Hezbollah. That's well understood in Israeli, and of course, they are trying uh, before using uh, using any forces against Iran before the blow they are planning against Iran. Of course, they need to weaken as Hezbollah and to weaken the Syrian regime. Maybe this is again a step just to prepare for a blow against Iran. Uh, They are planning this blow, they are speaking about this openly, and uh, maybe that is also a a step towards uh, this development of situation. And lastly, Victor, as the rest of the international community is looking towards Damascus this morning to assess uh, what the damages are, assess any of the casualties, um, some of the reasons, at least set forth by President Barack Obama last week at his press conference, uh, that has given him more concern about Syria is the use of the chemical gas and the chemical weapons. And there are some reports out this morning that actually some of the rebels possibly used sarin gas. Do we have any confirmation as to who is in possession of these chemical weapons and who is using them? Well, up to now, there is no uh, there is no good information information that can be trusted about the site who used these uh, chemical uh, chemical weapons. Maybe those were not the real chemical weapons, and maybe only some things that they could obtain not from militaries, but uh, maybe these are from. Uh, well, you see, of course. As for uh, as for different chemical um, well chemical things they uh, they use in civil industries they could have used these ones that's possible but up to now we can't say uh, surely who was the site who used um, who used these uh, chemical weapons and what kind of weapons they were up to now it's uh, difficult to believe any of the sites. Uh, but to tell the truth, of course, that looks like a provocation. Anyhow, uh, that, uh, of course, it's uh, quite good for the opposition forces to show that there is some kind of chemical weapon that uh, the government uses uh, just to give opportunity for the United States to interfere straightly into the situation. Uh, it looks like this up to now. Indeed, and we're going to leave the conversation right there. We've been speaking with Viktor Nadine Rayevsky. Viktor is a Russian politicologist, also a senior research assistant at the Institute of the World Economy and International Relations. Viktor, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you.